YouTube, how's it going? The Goat House is back. And we got our rookie power rankings heading into week eight. We started this a few weeks ago, really enjoying it. We're seeing how the, the rookies are playing, how they're moving up and down. Uh, and a lot of movement here. And I'd say something important, you know, if you see a guy move down, it's really not because he. I think he's bad, he played bad or anything. It's more of other guys moving up. I think really it's other guys helping themselves off their performances. So we see quite a bit of movement in this. It's good to take a look at some of the rookies. And we have 15 plus three honorable mentions. So uh, it, it doesn't mean anybody that misses uh, the list, I don't think they're playing well. That's only a, a small sample size there. Uh, a lot of instant impact rookies this year, so it's good to see. We got regular power rankings. We got weekly picks. Trade deadlines going on. We got grades on the big the big deals. Carlos Dunlap deal just got done. We got grades up, uh, and then more to come on that. You're going to want to follow our Twitter because we're breaking that news. We're talking about that news, giving you grades on the smaller trades. That Twitter's a must follow there. Uh, Instagram, podcast, Patreon, we're trying to reach 60K subscribers. Subscriber goal, please help us get there. Be much appreciated. I mentioned that Patreon, which is a link down below. Um, a bunch of extra content. Junior's got his score predictions. Uh, he's been doing very well this year. Uh, my bets of the week for NFL and college, along with college football score predictions. Uh, college football is in full effect pretty much now. Uh, we're still waiting on the Pac 12, though. Updated playoff predictions, updated every single week. Bonus content, Discord access, a lot more. The rookie power rankings, we had a new entry here. Antonio Gibson makes his way in on the list. He's been playing pretty well, uh, but after last week's game against the Cowboys, a dominant performance definitely gets him on the list at 15. We see the next three guys that just missed the cut. Jonathan Taylor, who just had a bye week. T. Higgins, who's very nearly getting on this list. He's really starting to pick it up over 400 yards. And Mekhi Becton, who's been dominant run blocking. Um, pass protect has been pretty solid, too. But a little inconsistent there. The run blocking performances have been absolutely dominant, but it's exactly what we expected. That was exactly the pre draft evaluation from us here. Um, so it's good to see it. Antonio Gibson, though, number 15, making his way on the list. Love to see it. Number 14, Michael Onwenwu. Uh, he's been playing fantastic, kind of a surprise guy. The Patriots offense line is starting to play a little worse here, but it's, it's he's might be the strong part of that group right now. Uh, but he's down two spots, mainly because other guys kind of had to move up because they had very good performances. So if you see a guy move down, I'm not. it's not because I think they had a bad performance. It's other guys just having that impressive of, an imp, uh, of a performance there. Uh, 13, Chase Claypool. Not much action. I, the Titans couldn't really stop the Steelers, but they for some reason they stopped Chase Claypool. Uh, they did a really good job on him. He actually had negative yards, uh, but still, he's definitely a guy on the rise. Fantastic player, a mismatch problem, um, and, and yeah, he's a really key factor for them, so I expect him to rise back up, but he's down three spots to number 13 heading into week eight. Uh, number 12 is Julian Blackman. He's been fantastic, you know, moved down just because somebody moved up and he didn't play this week, so somebody else kind of just helped themselves a little more, but he's been fantastic. Those Utah DBs have been really good, uh, you know, in the NFL, even in year one. Uh, Chase Young up three spots. Yeah, he missed um, some time this year, but then is really productive. Even when he when he doesn't get the sacks, he's getting the pressure, forcing turnovers that really won't come up on the stat sheet. So he's another guy that's I, I expect him just to continue to climb uh, and just continue to go up to the top here as the year goes on. And here here's a good start here, up three spots to number eleven. Uh, 10, James Robinson had a really big day. One of the better, I'd say the second best rookie running back. That's an undrafted guy. He's been fantastic. I'm impressed with really him in general, but the speed is kind of what's impressive. I think he added more speed to his game, which is hard to do. Very impressive. Uh, just all over the place. A key piece that J Jacksonville Jaguars uh, offense there. So he's up uh, a solid three spots there. That's pretty impressive. Number nine, Jalen Johnson. He's kind of been sticking around this nine spot for some time. He's been uh, easily the best rookie corner this year. Another Utah guy. Um, helps that he's with a really good defense. But, yeah, sticky in coverage, very physical. He knows how to be physical without, you know, drawing pass interference, which is fantastic. Almost like a veteran uh, knows how to do it. So, uh, yeah, he stays at number nine there. Uh, eight, Patrick Queen. Uh, yeah, down one spot. You know, he had a bye last week. Other guys just playing really well, moving up. Patrick Queen's definitely up for that Defensive Player of the Year award. He's been fantastic. A little inconsistent in coverage, but uh, really good, you know, rangy, and then really good on the blitz in that Martindale scheme, which is very important. See him go against the Steelers this week. Patrick Queen versus Chase Claypool, 8 versus 13. Maybe they won't go actually head-to-head, -head, uh, but uh, you get my point. Number seven, CeeDee Lamb was at one at one point. Um, Dak getting hurt really hurt CeeDee Lamb's stock, and that's unfortunate because he was playing like the best rookie in football for a bit there. Still a key piece, still knows how to get open, uh, and uh, he probably should have had a touchdown that last game, but Dalton underthrew him a bit. 
Um, yeah, and he's very very good after the catch as well. Uh, but he's at number seven. Again, mainly guys moving up because of their performances this past week. Six is Clyward Solaire. Uh, he had a pretty solid performance. He actually dropped the touchdown, though, but a pretty solid performance. You know, he's the best rookie running back and definitely up for offensive rookie of the year. Um, yeah, just other guys just really helping themselves, and that's what gets them uh, into in you know towards the top here. But Edward Solaire is definitely one to watch to continue to climb and make his way up for the offensive rookie of the year. There's a rookie year in general. Uh, number five is Antoine Winfield. He's going to stay put. He actually played a pretty good game, um, and he got an interception as well off of Mike Edwards' tip. Um, so that was impressive. And it, Yeah, it's tough not moving him up, but we got some other guys that really needed to boost up here. But Antoine Winfield, another guy that is definitely up for the defensive rookie of the year. He's been absolutely fantastic playing everywhere, not just sticking at one spot in the defensive backfield there, doing so much for that defense. For Joe Burrow, uh, couldn't get the win, but... You know, you wish if you would get that win because wins do matter for quarterbacks, and you could boost him a little more. But he does boost up two spots, number four. Uh, fantastic outing, throwing for an insane amount of yards. Um, you know, I just wish he would have got the job job done there. But it's uh, it, it's more on the defense there. But he's up two spots. Um, yeah, just just a rookie being able to air it out like that so much with that offensive line. Keep in mind, uh, is very impressive. He's got a bright future. But that's not it's not surprising here. It's not surprising. Three is Justin Jefferson. He had a bye. Uh, he moved down one spot. It's just uh, uh, somebody was already ahead of him and somebody had that good of a performance to move ahead of him. So that's more what it was. But he's been, uh, I mean, crazy impressive. You see the numbers compared to history, what he's done. He's, ma he's making history, and that's impressive. A guy that can play in the slot, play outside. Uh, the main thing about him is that he is very, very good at reading zone coverages, and that's what we're, we're all realizing here is those receivers are, are the best. They're the safest picks or the most pro-ready picks in the first round, the guys that can get open against zone because they can read it, they understand defenses, and that is kind of what's going unnoticed. People realize his, his hands, his footwork, which are great, or as he would say, feet work, um, and then the run after catch, but what goes unnoticed is his ability to read zone coverages and find the open open uh, gaps in those. You know, It's easier to beat man coverage for receivers than it is to beat zone, uh, and I think that's kind of the main reason some guys just don't work out the next level level two is Justin Herbert what a performance it was kind of just waiting for him to have another performance because he's kind of done that before but waiting for him to have that again while winning and that was going to boost him big time went out there and won the Jaguars were kind of uh, creeping up on them putting up a lot of points and he kept going he kept going the deep ball beautiful um, the accuracy beautiful the, the uh, not only the running ability but the toughness absolutely fantastic Justin Herbert boosts himself up him and Joe Burrow in quite of a battle here so that is interesting to see so he's up six spots after that one it's great to see him get a win he probably should have got that win against the Saints as well um, and but number one for me is still uh, Tristan Wirfs I, I'm just blown away by him um, not really a surprise that he's the at all that he's the best rookie. You know, I predicted him to be the best rookie offensive lineman in year one. Um, you know, being pro ready, feeling being able to play that right tackle spot, what he's known uh, to be solid at. Uh, having you having Tom Brady kind of being the last piece of the puzzle of the Buccaneers, but the difference in offensive line, especially from that right side, is ridiculous for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tom Brady really wasn't even pressured. He wasn't sacked, that's for sure, but he wasn't really pressured against the Las Vegas Raiders, and that was that really helped them to, to get, be able to get the. 45 points and he's been doing this every single week I mean we see the Buccaneers um the Buccaneers I just realized that now they have the top offensive guy which often since he's an offensive lineman he's probably not going to win offense rookie of the year they have the top defensive guy the Buccaneers had themselves a hell of an offseason in general but looking at the draft uh you could see uh in a video like this so that's very impressive there but really looking for that quarterback battle um, the receiver battle between Jefferson and CeeDee Lamb, but then you can see uh, guys like Chase Claypool and T. Higgins are sneaking up. There's a couple other guys. The receiver class is so stacked. We knew that, though. The running back battle between Edward Hilaire, uh, James Robinson, Antonio Gibson, Jonathan Taylor, guys like that, super impressive. Offensive line, there's a couple good offensive linemen, but Tristan Wirfs is kind of leading the way there. Uh, but the defensive rookie of the year battle, too. Uh, you got Antoine Winfield, Patrick Queen, the, the Jalen Johnson's kind of the wild card guy. Uh, but then you got Chase Young that we all, and then Julian Blackman kind of a wild card guy as well. But then you got uh, Chase Young that we know is going to soar to the top and try to beat those guys out, and he's very capable. So uh, a lot to watch out for every single week, and we'll be back with this video every single week. We got you covered. Again, uh, the actual power rankings with the 32 teams every single week, uh, playoff predictions, uh, we'll be coming halfway through the season, but uh, so after this week. But uh, Patreon people will get those. Uh, Patreon members get those every single week. 
a lot going on here uh, on the channel uh, and, uh, and even off with those links in the description that you can check out. Trade deadline coming up. Can't wait for that. We'll have you covered, but that's going to do it. Please smash the like button. Subscribe, turn notifications on. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.